Good afternoon all. You join me as I'm about to try an experiment with my experimental spot welding rig. So I've got um, a micro switch here with a 100 farad 2.7 volt supercapacitor attached to it. Um, it's attached to the normally open and normally closed connections mainly for sort of mechanical strength. Uh, it's being charged by this power supply. I think it's discharged at the moment and uh, the positive when this button is pressed will root down onto this piece of copper wire the negative is routed round to this steel strip and the idea is to try and in create a current between the copper and the steel and weld nickel strip now my nickel strip is in here i haven't opened it yet so i haven't tried this i have tried it with a little piece of aluminium strip and uh, that didn't work at all, so um, I'm hoping that the nickel strip might work better. So I was trying to work out why the aluminium strip didn't work, so I've put down the resistivities. Aluminium is 2.6 10 to the minus 8. Nickel is 7 times 10 to the minus 8, so it's got a higher resistivity. That should mean it will get hotter when the current flows through it. Interestingly, uh, steel, I've put FE, but it's steel. It varies, it depends what type of steel it is, from 14 10 to the minus 8 up to 69 times 10 to the minus 8 for stainless steel. This isn't stainless steel, but I don't quite know what kind of steel it is. It is ferrous. Um, I've also put the melting points of the various um, metals here as well. Aluminium is quite low at 660, but this didn't melt. Uh, nickel is higher, 1450, that's about the same as steel, uh, but copper is lower, so I'm not quite sure why people use a copper point to do the welding because the copper is going to melt before the nickel and the uh, steel do. So I don't know, it's all a bit uh, mysterious. But anyway, I'm going to try the uh, nickel strip. So I need my knife. Let's cut into this. Ah. Take the uh, nickel strip out. Oh, it's in there. That's a bit weird. Right, so here's my nickel strip uh, held together with this piece of Captan tape. So the first thing I'm going to do is try and weld nickel to the steel. Now I'm half expecting this to not work. In fact, I'm more than half expecting it to not work. This could be a total fail. Then I might try welding nickel strip to itself, just putting two pieces of nickel strip here. Now normally these um, spot welding devices have two points coming down and they weld by putting current in from the top but I'm putting current in from beneath on the top so I'm going right through the metals not the steel but uh, I'm going right through the nickel strip I've sharpened this to a sort of modestly sharp point I did that by just cutting it with um, pliers in both directions so that you get two sort of V shapes it's quite sharp though uh, and the reason for the switch is because I kind of figured that if I didn't have the switch and I just brought the supercapacitor down onto the nickel strip, if it wasn't in contact with the steel, you'd lose all your energy before you were able to apply pressure. So this way I'm able to apply pressure and then press the switch and then all the energy from the supercapacitor gets dumped into this joint. Of course, it also gets dumped into everything else. So there are issues with this, um, but anyway, before, uh, without further ado, let's actually give it a try. I need to put some power on my power supply. Now, um, I've set this for 2.6 volts, uh, not the 2.7 that this could take. And uh, what's the current I've set it to? Two amps. So let's get that charging up. Now, it doesn't matter if my point is touching the steel because it's not connected unless I press that button. So this will start to charge up. That's volts, so we're up to about one volt. Let's get some of this nickel strip ready. This is described on eBay as pure nickel strip. doesn't say how pure, but let's cut a piece of that off. I might cut a few extra pieces actually in case I want to try welding strip to strip. I suppose I ought to try and get this as flat as possible. Um, but I am able to apply pressure before I weld. So let's turn it with the curved side. Oh, actually, that's interesting. Nickel is attracted to magnets. There's a magnet in there. 
Uh, right, so we're at 2.6 volts. I can apply pressure and then I can dump the whole lot and you can see the voltage on the pass by goes down. And has that well did no it hasn't done anything. That's a disappointment. Let's just try that again. Press the point down onto the nickel. Dump all the energy. And of course when you get down to those sort of voltages there's nothing left. But no that's not even melted anything. What's warm? Is that warm? Yep that's warm. Is this wire warm? It's moderately warm. Is the steel warm? No, that's not really warm. It's got a very large cross-sectional area, this. So despite its relatively high resistivity, um, it's, uh, it's going to have fairly good conduction because it's got a large uh, cross-sectional area. What doesn't get warm is this switch. That doesn't get particularly warm. Uh, but the thing that seems to get warmest is this supercapacitor. Once you've done this a few times and that's nearly ready to go again, this starts really warming up. So my concern is that this supercapacitor actually has a fairly high ESR, equivalent series resistance, and therefore it's not really dumping um, an enormous current into the junction, the joint here. You can see that we do have sort of energy available because I can get uh, sparks. If I rub this, I'll have to hold the switch. Once you get down to about a volt and a half, you really don't get much in the way of sparks. But if you let this thing charge up to the full uh, 2.6, I suppose I could go to 2.7 volts. I just wanted to keep this a little bit below its maximum for fear that uh, this capacitor might do something nasty. Not seeing any bulging on the end, but it does warm up. It does get quite warm. So a lot of the energy is being lost actually in the capacitor and it's not going into the nickel uh, and not therefore melting it. Let me just try those sparks again. If you run this along this edge you get the best sparks. But uh, yeah we're getting plenty of sparks there so there's, there's energy in there. Oh, that's dropped away again. But no the welding is just not working at all. The spot welding, let's get this back up to uh, full voltage 2.6. There it is. Put a bit of pressure on. Dump all the energy. Oh, I bent that. Oh, I wonder if that bent because it got a bit warm. Mm, it's not that warm. I can still touch it. I think I just applied too much uh, vertical pressure to that. But no, that's not uh, welding or melting or anything like. So that's a fail. So let's try two pieces of nickel strip sat on top of each other. That's fully charged. Put my point down on top of those. Dump the energy. And there's just no, nothing visible. There's no visible heat being generated. The heat is all in this capacitor. This is getting really quite hot now. So I just think this capacitor has, doesn't have a low enough um, resistance to do this job. It was one of these cheap ones, only about three or four dollars. So um, I do think I need to get um, either a better quality or a bigger supercapacitor. I think that's one of the things. But is there anything else that you guys can see in this setup that's causing the problem? Apart from the myriad connections here, solder connection there, you know, joints within the switch, uh, this wire, this crimp, this bracket. There's a lot of places where heat can be dissipated, but most of it as I say, is in this capacitor. That actually feels pretty warm now. So I welcome your comments on this. Um, the switch gets a little bit warm, but I've got a feeling that might be uh, heat from the capacitor running through these two fairly large soldered joints into the two connections there and warming this up. But yeah, maybe some heat is generated in here. These are rated for, I think, 16 amps, and I'm probably putting... Well, it's hard to say, but you, what would you get? About 100 amps initially when this thing is fully charged into, uh, well, into the circuit and everything is absorbing energy. You know, that's getting warm. The supercapacitor is kind of getting the warmest. That's actually quite toasty warm. That kind of works as a, <laughs> as a bit of a hand warmer. 
but uh, absolutely does not work as a spot welder absolutely nothing doing so the micro switch yeah that'll be dissipating some energy yeah i can feel that's warm again uh, the supercapacitor certainly dissipating energy is a bit lost in this copper that's one uh, square millimeter bit lost there that's a copper uh, crimp terminal and then we're into steel which has this higher resistivity uh, but there's no significant heat in the steel is there any in the joint area no nothing there so it's all being lost in the various bits of connections my thinking now is um, for the next experiment to go to a bigger capacitor I can't go to a higher voltage well I could go to 2.7 and of course um, the energy in this system is proportional to V squared, so going up small incremental amounts of voltage will produce more energy. But I st still can't get my head around the various resistivities and melting points here, and therefore the best way to put enough energy into the nickel, because it's the nickel you want to melt, and the top surface of the steel, you want that to melt so that they melt together, but it just ain't working that's not welding at all it's stuck there more by the magnetism from this magnet this is a, a later concept which i'll come to in another video but yeah what do you think what am i doing wrong this is just at the moment a total fail cheerio